Hey, Peppin. Yeah, 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 yo. Uh, are you on? You sound like you're on drugs. Legalize them all. Oh, we need to talk. <laughs> So glad you could join us. I'm here with Pepin. Say something about it. I am here. I'm also here with special guest Brienne. How you doing, Bing? I'm well. How are you? I'm quite well myself. And uh, we do have back on today a fourth guest. It is my mom, Sandy. How you doing, Mom? I'm good. Thank you. Absolutely. And to be honest, she's like my mom as well. It, it does feel that way. Aww. So uh, let's talk about drugs. So we're talking today. I think the the we we've teased in the past. Uh, it was actually one of the first couple episodes that we would talk about drugs eventually. Uh, we're not going to talk about drug effects today. That is still episode forty two. But we're going to talk about the um, legalization of drugs um, from a government standpoint, um, without getting too dry and dull about it. And I'll try and make some dick jokes. Dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> that is the first time I've ever heard my mom whisper dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it is as unsettling as you imagine. <laughs> so, um, let's uh, go, go counterclockwise today, the opposite of last time. Um, B, what do you think? Well, um, as far as legalizing drugs go, I'm kind of... I, I'm against it. Oh, wow. I yeah. was not expecting that. So, so to be clear, are you against all drugs, some drugs? No, I, I, most drugs. I think the only one that I am for is uh, marijuana. Nathan, really, really brief overview of your your ideas per recon. So we glass every single drug out there. It doesn't okay. matter what it is. And I'm not just talking about hallucinatory drugs or hallucinogenic drugs. I'm also talking about steroids. So we like steroids or any other drug like that. Any kind of drug you want to use, you know, medical drugs. So you're taking the Ron Paul view. Uh, you, could, you could say that. It's the libertarian view. It's your body, your choice. You make your decisions as long as they're informed. And mother? I'm with Nate on that one. Legalize it all. Okay, this is going to be really interesting. I, I, I'm still really surprised that Bree is the con here, um, and she's also against it. <laughs> what? I called you a con. So, um, uh, who wants to kick it off? Who has something really burning that they the the opening point they want to make? Okay, so Nate said whatever, anything as long as it's uh, educated. Uh, decision that you make, you put yourself in. Did you say that? Uh, yeah, cool, k- kind of. Not n- So this is one of those things where you need to know what you're taking, right? Okay. So if someone lies to you and says, this is X, and it's not X, that, oh. that that's not okay. Do you mean oh. ecstasy or using X as a placeholder? X as a placeholder. <laughs> placeholder? Are you yes, sure I'm you're not on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, X as a placeholder. Okay. And you could have picked any other letter. And it <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you want some heroin or you want some marijuana and you buy marijuana. Okay, that's an informed decision. Now, of course, you have to be in control of yourself. So if you're on alcohol and you want to buy a bunch of, let's say, ecstasy, well, you're not really in control of your body. It'd probably be wrong to sell you that. It's like it's wrong to make contracts when you're drunk. Okay. Similarly, a child, you know, someone's like five or 10 they they can't control their body either so they wouldn't be able to purchase drugs do you have an age in mind uh they, they, let's go with 18 because that's that's easy you know it's of course it's very bit of a gray area there because some people might be at that age at 15 they might be in complete control of their body but 18 is a pretty decent age um i because i know that they've been upping the the limits for things like um cigarettes specifically they've up to 21 in a lot of states now um, that you have to be 21 to buy them. So it, it just seems interesting that you put it at 18 for all drugs, like even like super hardcore ones. 
um, or what people like class four and et cetera versus, you know, uh, the, the state right now, something like cigarettes and alcohol is 21. Right. Oh, well, I'm not putting an age to it necessarily. Right. Right. It's rather the age maturity with your brain. So let's say they have a brain scan and they can look, look at each person's brain individually and say, your brain is fully mature or mature enough to, you know, decide to use heroin, or to decide to use marijuana or decide to use Coke or steroids. That should be maybe independent then, you know, based on the person. Maybe someone will be 16 and they'll be able to use that. Maybe they'll have to be like 32. It, it could be dependent upon the person. Interesting. I feel like that would be really hard to regulate. Yes, yes. So let's just say 18 just to make it easy to think about. Fair enough. Or tw- 21, 20. Let's say 21 because it sounds safer. Okay. <laughs> so I-, I cut you off there, so go on. No, that's okay. Um, I actually was more or less asking because I was trying to figure out what he meant, so I wanted to clarify. But I think where I was going with that is um, – so it was all drugs, like that was uh, barbiturates or like, like he said, steroids, but we're also talking opiates, everything right across class four, class whatever. P- pretty much anything you could uh, ingest. See, I, I guess let me ver- clarify what I was saying. I guess I am for more natural stuff like shrooms or cocaine, coca, coca leaves. That's what they're called. Uh, marijuana, things like that, but like anything that's man-made or like tampered with or stomped on, mm, I, I don't think any that should be legal. Heroin, uh, methamphetamines, stomped on like wine. Um, stomped on. Oh gosh, no stomped. <laughs> like on, wine is stomped on, right? It's stomped on grapes. Right, stomped on is a term that um, people who make drugs they are cutting it with something else. Oh, it's, it's called stomped. I don't have your street cred. I'm sorry. Yeah, that I learned that in Florida. Oh, mm-hmm. so so <laughs> so you are for legalization of anything that naturally grows in the earth. Organic. Yep. Um, whether now, what if you're taking something that naturally grows in the earth and you're synthesizing it in some way to make it usable, you're such as cocoa? Uh, hmm. Like, don't you have to refine that to make cocaine? Yeah, but that. As long as you're not stomping on it or cutting it, and I guess... So you're saying don't add anything. Right. You are modifying cocaine because you have to get it down to the the powder. You got to get it into a form where you can ingest it and get the good from it. So, yeah, you can modify it like that, but don't add anything by any means. Well, so one thought I have is about, say... you're. you're, you're, you're you brought up opium? No, sorry. You brought up heroin, for mm-hmm. instance. Now, heroin is derived from opium, and opium mm-hmm. is a natural kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, opium and heroin are very, very similar. They're mm-hmm. Some people say they're almost the same. Of course, they're different. But so would opium be okay because it's natural? Well, I mean, okay, so everyone, opium is from poppy seeds. The, we know that, right? There, you can find opium in poppy seeds, so that's its natural form, I guess. You'd have to eat a ton of them to get any kind of high or anything off, like a ton. So, uh, I guess you can ground it up. And is it you add it, stuff? It's, it's a whole process that you use to extract it. Right. it. Uh, I don't know. I don't quite know how to do it, but I know it's a big industry in Afghanistan, and it was very big in uh, India. Yeah, and it's, so opium, you know, smoking opium is very, very popular there. And I think it's a bit easier because you don't have to have all these processes as much. I know heroin is more of a uh, extract. And uh, what was it? Was it methadone? Morphine. Morphine is also very, very concentrated. That's even more powerful than heroin. And it's just a level of extraction. So I have a really annoying question to ask to kind of tease out some details here in my mind of, of why why you necessarily believe this. Let's say, hypothetically, there was a really natural drug that you can take that is really destructive to your body and really addictive, um, or you can take an alternative that gives you the same high that's man-made, that's really clean, it's not addictive, uh, it's really good for you almost. Um, it, wouldn't that, w- would you still want the natural thing that's more harmful to be legal over the, the, the man-made thing? Yeah, I don't trust men. So, yeah. Interesting. Sandy, what are your thoughts on this? Do you make that kind of same distinction in your mind between man-made and natural? Hmm. No. 
not really. I feel like if all drugs were legalized, then they would be regulated by the um, Food and Drug Administration. Yeah, the FDA. Yes. So it would be, you know, it wouldn't, it would be less stomped on. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, seriously, like really. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a, a great assertion to make. So in a way, let's say there's a problem with heroin or ecstasy getting cut with all this kind of shitty, crappy sh- stuff, right? So the FDA regulating it would allow you to know exactly what you're getting and also that's safe. It's not being cut with, I don't know, glass shards, let's say if that's a thing, or acetaminophen or caffeine. It's being cut with stuff that's actually healthy or you could you know determine is actually necessary. Exactly. So one of the... Um... That that leads to a point that that I want to make, and that's a lot of uh, overdoses of things like, well, let's take heroin for example, come which is a huge epidemic right now at very least in in this the New England region that we live in. A lot of the reasons for overdoses isn't because someone just keeps taking the drug until they die; it's because they're taking the drug, and um, one of the most popular reasons is that it's not a pure form. So they're taking uh, X amount, let's say one gram. And obviously these numbers are way skewed because I know nothing about heroin use um, and uh, down to the gram level. But so they're taking one gram of the shitty stuff and then the supplier gets in some or they have to go to a different supplier or the supplier gets in really pure stuff or they cut it less or something like that. So now they have really pure stuff and to take one gram of that kills them because when it was cut, it wasn't quite a gram. It was half and half with with beef bouillon or something like that like that's obviously baby formula (laughs) so so instead of taking you know half of the drug they're actually taking a full gram of the drug and then they die or they're they're an addict so they're taking you know a gram every day and then their supply gets cut off and then a week or a month later they they finally find the supplier again and they're used to take the the tolerance that they built up and being able to take a gram and when really they should start back out at, at the 10th that they originally were starting at and they die because they're taking too much all at once because there's no regulated supply that they can go to. So I think that really leads to the the argument that you're making that if it's regulated, they'll be able to get a supply whenever they want so they won't have these lapses that end up causing them to die and it won't be cut with other things that might cause them to overdose when they're taking more or less than they should because they don't know what's in it or if there's something dangerous being cut into it. Right. Yeah. Also, to add on to that point, even if it's the same stuff, same supplier, same batch, there is a different consistency in within that batch. So you might get some stuff which is extra potent within that batch. You might get some stuff which is really weak in that batch. And that that's also a big problem there, where if it's medical grade, that they, they control for consistency. They control for consistency, so it's very consistent across the board. Uh, now, the I don't I, I don't know if you're on board with this yet. So, <laughs> so, so if you take out the factors of health, right? See, being cut with shitty stuff. Let's say you know exactly what you're getting. Are you still more in favor of naturalistic stuff? Absolutely. And. What is it about being from nature which is important? I wish I could explain it or articulate it a little bit better, but I I don't know if it's a personal thing with me anyways, because when I have this conversation with everyone else, I get skewered alive all the time. But it, for me, I just don't trust someone else enough, and I don't have the personal knowledge enough to take a um, product or a chemical and create another byproduct in which can give me the effects that the natural thing can do. Um, also, I feel if you're stupid enough to take something like, like you said, opiate, heroin, um, pure form, whatever, they both kind of have the same effects. So why don't you just do, like I said, opiates, whatever. Okay, opium, legalize that. Chinese smoked it for years and years and years. It's like the first known party drug o- over there. And um, I don't see any issue with it. But why why wouldn't you just go to that versus taking heroin, which does get cut, does get... And I know you said you get the FDA, but what does the FDA... <laughs> oh, let's just imagine like an ideal world okay. where you know for certain it is not cut with shitty stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Some things have to be cut with other things, but you can make it make the binder kind of uh, right. non-harmful. So, for instance, aspirin is cut with a binder. And this is because, you know... Otherwise, it's going to be a powder. 
So, so it's one of those kind of things. And also to kind of relate to you in a kind of way. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm very, I'm like, I'm like a physicist in this kind of way. Okay. So something being natural or unnatural is this kind of like a label in my mind. It's all about the molecules. So for me, let's say I could get these molecules of uh, THC in marijuana, right? The natural source. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that's great. Let's say we can synthesize this in the lab mm-hmm. and get those same molecules, that same effect. Well, it's the same thing. Well, what's the difference? Now, we'll say one's cheaper. We'll say one's more expensive. Maybe maybe that's my deciding factor. Maybe okay. one's easier to consume. So let's say there's a... Uh, let's say they can make... Let's, let's say I'm into heroin, hypothetically, or that, those kind of painkiller drugs. And let's say they can make one from... from in the, in the lab. They can synthesize it. And let's say there's opium, which is not synthesized. This is from plants. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, it doesn't really matter which one I choose. It's just a preference of ingestion and price. So, so th- that's in my mind because it's, it's the same right. drug. Like, I don't know what the difference is. Like, I don't really see that distinction in my mind. Uh, hmm. and I'm not saying you're wrong for seeing that distinction. It's, this is just where I'm coming from. Yeah, no. But I'm also a person that refuses to take medicine anyways for anything. Like, I just don't, I just don't like it. No, it's kind of hard to articulate. Medicine, as in any kind of medicine, like Advil, uh, it... cough medicine. I don't, I don't now, like medicine. Do you consume natural medicine, like something from like a tea or? Um. Yeah, I I will take the. I will be more likely to take the approach of changing my diet if that's what it needs. Um. Or like you said, tea. If my throat is sore, maybe I'll drink a cup of tea, kind of open it up, see what's going on. You know, let, let that go that way, but nothing, yeah, nothing. Some cocoa leaves, it's going to pick me up. Right? Exactly. So this sounds Chewing like a deeply it. personal thing for you. So I kind of think it is, yeah. So you're, but you're, the stance that you've taken at the beginning that I'm. It's not changing. Is, is we're talking legalization for everybody. Right. So despite the fact that this is for y- your preference, you think that your preference should be imposed upon everyone. Well, I mean, okay, so let's take methamphetamine. So that drug, if you could find a way to, it's it's made. It's a chemical. There's no. It's a potpourri. They they call it a potpourri. That's when you grab all kinds of different kind of chemicals and say, voila, here we go. And yes, you can make it the same every time if you follow a recipe. You write it all down, so on and so forth. But taking that drug, you don't. It reacts differently in everybody. So you're saying it's okay to legalize that as well, and then you have people eating each other's faces off and ripping their clothes off. That that was not a true thing that happened. That was actually you should check check Snopes on that one. Okay, I will. Because that one wasn't true. Okay, but there was a couple who in New York took methamphetamine. They did not eat for two days, and they were found eating the fingers and toes off of a homeless man, and they said they were hungry. Mm, I'm. I'm pretty sure that was a Snopes article that came out that, well, not from Snopes, but like I checked that on Snopes and it was like, no, but my my point, uh, the point you're trying to get at being that there are negative side effects that you can't predict because it's different for everybody. Right. So it should be banned for everybody. Well, I'm saying it's causing, it can cause other people to harm other people. If you're out to harm yourself and it's your body, you make that decision, that's fine. But if there's actual factor of hurting someone else, I don't, I just don't see. So should we ban alcohol? Oh, definitely. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Because, because if, if you're talking about harming other people, alcohol is a is a huge factor Mm in that a ton of people get hurt because people are drunk and i mean domestic abuse in in itself is is a great example of that right i i know that i just i i think people with violent tendencies can get violent no matter what they're on whether on drugs or not if you're saying that there are certain drugs that might be more than others but that didn't seem like the necessary necessarily the distinction you were making you were just saying natural or not natural are you implying that not natural things, you're more likely to be violent than natural things? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, Mom, I'd, lo- I'd love to hear um, <laughs> a bit about your, your views on this. Um, we can talk just ethically first about, um, you know, general health, welfare, things like that. Um, I figure we, we can get into economics a little bit later. Um 
if anybody else has anything to say, I have a ton to say about that. And I figure Pepin probably does too. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, from a, a, a personal standpoint, what, what's your thoughts here? My thought process on legalizing everything is that, um, you're going to have a lot less crime because it's not going to be as difficult for people to get. And I, I personally, if heroin's legal, I'm not going to do it. I don't have any interest in doing, honestly, any drugs. But just because it's legal, I'm not going to do it. And I don't think that people that aren't going to do it are going to do it just because it's legal. So you're making the a couple arguments here. Um, can we start with the crime one? So you're saying that um, – so, so it's pretty common knowledge that um, we can go back to prohibition. They ban alcohol – and all of a sudden, all these mobs start forming and start s- distributing alcohol and selling it and rise to raise into power um, because they can get so much money from this thing. Right. And that, but there, there have always been organized crime, gangs, um, cartel, all of that stuff. I, I would make the argument that just because you, that that they're not drawn to drugs just because it's drugs. They're drawn to drugs because it's the easiest way to make the most money. Yeah, if you're talking about the money aspect of it. I'm talking about the addiction aspect of it. So you're like, saying that that addiction causes crimes? Yes. Because... The people who are addicted are committing crimes. Yes. For... They're, yes. They're stealing. They steal from loved ones especially to get money to buy drugs. So well, just guess... so just to tease out a few details here. So there's two kinds of crimes going on here. So I think Sandy, if you're saying drug legalization would reduce crime, what you're not saying is that you know since we won't be criminalizing people who are using drugs now, that there'd be less crime because that, that's kind of like a you know you could reduce crime doing that way. You could say like let's say let's say you make sh- shoplifting legal now. You know, you could say there's no more shoplifting, right? Right? There's no more you know, no more crimes of those matter, but you're not you're not quite saying that, right? right? Rather you're saying that the people who commit crimes that are drug related would not occur anymore or not recur as frequently. Right. But like you said, if you make addiction not a crime anymore, okay, you find someone somebody has heroin and they get arrested for for having heroin, you're not curing the problem. You're arresting somebody for being addicted. And I don't see that as a crime. Statistically, prohibition is, and um, like, uh, what, what's it, what am I trying to say? Prohibition is just alcohol, right? Yeah, prohibition is regard to, it, prohibition is just a general thing, but it's also, when we talk prohibition, it's alcohol generally. Prohibition of, of drugs as a whole, like like we have it right now, is um it, it's actually very effective for bringing down the number of people who are using um a large part of that is uh supply um and it, it, you have to kind of know somebody whereas if it's legal you see those numbers really skyrocket up um and i mean even when we were when alcohol was illegal that was the case that um the the number of the use went way down um, from my, I, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head and I apologize for that, but it was, it was pretty close to half, if not more, more than 50% use. Really? I, I'm a little unsure about that. I mean, it, it's possible. I, I've actually re- done research within the last week about this specifically. Okay. Good. Um, and I didn't just check the, the, um, F, the DEA or the FDA on this because though they make stuff up all the time. Right. Cause I, I can, mm-hmm. Because I've done some research into certain places, like I think Mexico and a few other uh, countries, where they decrim- where they decriminalize drugs and use actually went down. A lot of places in uh, Europe, I believe as well, have decriminalized uh, marijuana and some other drugs, and the use has actually gone down. Is that the drug itself that's decriminalized, or it's the addict is not a well, just to clarify what decriminalization is, it's not legalization. So decriminalization is you don't go to jail. You you pay a fine, but you don't you don't go to jail, right? There's no criminal record. So in the state of Maine, for instance, marijuana is decriminalized. So if you get caught with marijuana, they're going to take it. You're going to have to go to court. 
you're going to have to pay a $200, $300 fine, but it's not going to be on your record, and it's not like you are going to have Prison. to go to jail or anything. Unless you're I, driving. I that option. <laughs> God bless you. That's what I was trying to get at. I don't, I don't think it should be legalized, but I decriminalized, absolutely. Now, I, I really, I'm interested in your idea here, Mom, about the people who are on, who are addicted being less likely to um, commit crimes. So let's say it's legal. And the people who are addicted we can argue would be the same people who are going to be addicted when it's legal as when it's illegal. So they still need money to buy this stuff. So aren't they still going to commit crimes to get the money? The only crime that I can see them stopping because you legalize is gang related crimes in relation to drugs, the supplier of them, but gangs and cartels and all that, they're always going to exist. They're just going to change what they're supplying to something else that's illegal because it raises the most money. Sandy, if you don't mind, go answers. for it. <laughs> so I believe the argument here is that this is getting into economics here. That's where I was going to end up anyway. I am a business major. It's just what I do. So the so when drugs are illegal, this creates a huge, huge barrier to enter the market because you have to go over all these legal hurdles. It's very, very risky. You have to pay a lot of money just to get the drugs into the country, right? Or even if they're grown here, you have to cover up their, you know, that they're being done, that they're being made, that they're being manufactured. And then you have to pay off cops, you have to pay off judges, you have to pay off all these different people. And so the price of the drug is actually very, very, very high in comparison where there should actually be in, say, a actual market economy. So, so let's take alcohol, for instance. Alcohol is very cheap. Now, some people would say it's pretty expensive, but it, it's actually very, very cheap. Now, if alcohol was illegal, now what happened is it'd be very hard to access alcohol. You would have to start having to smuggle it from place to place. You get very secretive. You have people who would be doing this for profit, of course, and they would need that extra money to make it worth it. Because you know, if you're doing it for free or for, or for nothing, you know, why, why is it worth it, right? So the supply goes way, way down because it, it's illegal. And the very fact of this causes the prices to raise astronomically. Especially with marijuana. Marijuana is called weed for a reason. It's it's very, very easy to grow and very, very easy to manufacture. And the price of weed is way, way, way higher than it should be because of all these legal hurdles. So you're talking about supply and demand here, saying that demand would stay the same if it if between legal and illegal, but supply would be able to go way up and the the loopholes that you have to jump through, the amount of hands it has to pass, um, so the price generally would go down. If the price would go down if it was legal, and beyond that, if we imagine someone who is, you know, they're addicted to this drug, when the price is, say, let's say the price of uh, a bag of Coke is $10 when it's legal, right? So someone who can probably just buy that with their, in their pocket change or whatever. But let's say the bag of Coke is $100 when it's illegal. Well, that person is addicted, and they might need their fix, so they might be willing to actually do something legal if they need to get that fix. I think the, the point that you're missing is that an addict is an addict. And it if they have $100, whether it gets them 0. 0.1 or it gets them 10 grams, they're going to spend $100 on that drug because that's what they're addicted to. And that's just how addicts are. But... Can you expand on that a little bit? Because I'm not saying they wouldn't buy more or less. What I'm saying is that if you don't have $100 to buy a drug and you are addicted and you really need to get that drug, you will steal money from other people. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's only $10 you need, you can probably scrounge up $10. $100, $1,000, you're not going to be able to scrounge up that kind of money very easily without having to resort to theft. Uh, Do you have a point to make? Oh, I was just agreeing with you with the whole an addict is going to do what they can to get that addiction fixed. And if it means theft, they're going to do it. Now, would you also agree that someone who is not having to steal, or let's say, you know, back across $100, let's say it's $10 now when it's legalized, would they be willing to steal or would they just get it voluntarily? Yep. They would be willing to steal. Uh, yeah, an, an addict is going to do whatever it they takes. Need. You're saying if the price is less, oh. it's easier to get less amount in legal ways. I'm saying 
it doesn't matter. Right. They're always going to need more money because they always are going to need more drugs. Right. So $10 might be, you know, right this second, but they don't want it for right this second. They want enough for the whole week. They want enough for the whole month. They want enough to last them forever. So as much as they can buy, they're going to buy. I don't think that's how addicts think. That's that's how I thought when I was addicted to stuff. Absolutely. That's yeah. That's what happened when my brother I want, went into the church. most I could possibly afford at any time. I would spend that much money, and then as soon as I was out, I would I was still high, and I was I I needed more, but I had just used all my money. So you were, I, you were an addict. Yes. So like I had to. <laughs> I just broke my mother's heart <laughs> live. <laughs> Now that Nate's done laughing, my mom's heart is broken. I just own you as a son. Wow, shit just got Nate. real. So, so I used all my money to buy all my spare money, right? So I'm being responsible. I can still pay all my bills. And then I ran out of drugs after like two days because I went on a binge because that's what you do when you have a whole bunch of drugs is you go on a binge and you do it all. Now I'm coming down from this really, really long, uh, really great high, and I'm starting to crash. And the higher you get, the worse it is as you come down. And you start having withdrawals if you've been doing it for a while. You'll do anything to, to get more. So if I'm spending all of my money to get X amount, I use all of that. I need to spend more money, and now I don't have any money. So what am I going to do? I'm going to find money one way or the other. Right, but in this instance, the drug is illegal, right? And the drug is way higher than it should be. Mm-hmm. So you could maybe say theoretically you would spend, I don't know. I think you're missing the point. So let's take something legal that you say is cheap, alcohol. Mm. How many people's lives are destroyed because they spend all their money on alcohol? They they lose their house. They lose their family. They Gambling, that's legal, and people spend all their money on it. It it could be penny slots. You could lose your whole house on penny slots. It's about the addiction, not about the cost. Right. Well, I'm not arguing that their life's not going to be destroyed. They're not going to be terrible. What I'm arguing is someone who is an alcoholic and or abducted, addicted to penny slots, they're not likely or as likely to start stealing or to start murdering or start mur- robbing people for their addiction when it's legal because it's cheaper. Well, that's not entirely true because the money isn't a factor. It's not even considered. Whether it's legal or illegal or how much it costs, none of that is even a thought in an addict's mind. Not even a thought. Mm-hmm. I, I, they just they want they just the want most the amount fix. of money that they can possibly get at that time. So let's say let's say I I need ten bucks and that'll get me through two days of drugs. So I'll go out and I'll do something legal to get the 10 bucks. And then all of a sudden I don't have $10 anymore and I need 10 more dollars. I, I always need 10 more dollars. Always, 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 always. So if I can get $100 at one time doing one big illegal thing, now I have $100 worth of drugs. Now I'm good for two weeks. I feel way better. Now I can enjoy my high more. I can be high longer. Right. It, it's, it, a, it's a the end game. The amount of money is irrelevant. You When you always need more money, you will resort to vi- to to illegal things. I, 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 well, I, I'm still a little lost here because if it's the prices are much much lower, you should always have enough money to buy the amount you need. Th- then how do people lose their everything on penny slots? That's literally they need a penny. It, well, of course people do that every once in a while. I'm not saying this stuff doesn't happen. I'm not saying some alcoholics don't go crazy and start robbing stores and stuff like that. But what I'm arguing is the frequency is much much lower. So I'm not arguing. So, so if we imagine. You know, let's so say cocaine or marijuana is a hundred dollars again. So, you know, let's imagine that little picture right there. And let's imagine it's ten dollars. I would argue that there would be far, far, far more thefts, robberies, and you know, any kind of thing like that. Once a hundred dollars, than compared to ten dollars. I'm not arguing it wouldn't be any because that's. I, I guess my issue there is in the addiction itself. So, um, penny slots, alcohol, far less likely to get addicted than meth heroin most people who are going to be doing heroin recreationally are going to end up being addicted to it most people who play penny slots aren't going to get addicted it's it's just a very few number of people and those are people who are going to be addicted to pretty much anything it's just how they are but heroin you don't have to have an addictive personality to be addicted to it's just the nature of the drug itself the the, the studies that's kind of arguable though i would love to to see those studies uh it's actually kind of interesting because uh 
about 10% of people who do heroin, they actually become addicted. The other 90% of people, they actually don't become addicted to this. And this is actually a pretty common thing with most drugs in general. Same with cocaine. And... I, I have I have a lot of trouble trusting any te- any statistics that are coming out on illegal drugs because we they don't do like legitimate tests on many of them. That's why so many people say we need to do more research into marijuana because there's not enough research because it's illegal. So you can't do tests on these things. So like to say that across the board, like 10%, that number means nothing to me until I see it in a controlled situation. Should there be more research? That I would definitely agree with. I think you were going to make a point at one point. No? Okay. I mean, I would say it's indicative, though. So does there need to be more research, better research? Of course, of course. But is it indicative of a you know, general picture? I would say yes. So what, what's the real number? Is it 20%? Is it 30%? Is it 5%? You know, that, that's the question. But is it 90%? No, that's not very likely with this preliminary, preliminary research. I think it means a lot in this specific argument. I think the, 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 addicti- the nature of being addicted to it means a lot more. If it's 1%, that's pretty much nothing. If it's 10%, that's a ton when it's something that's completely legal. That's a shit ton. Um, let's, let's, let's shift away from this now. I think we've both made very good points for either side of that. Um, I don't want the whole podcast to turn into Nate and I arguing about (laughs) about addiction. Um, although I think addiction plays such a huge role in this as a whole. Um, I would, I would want to, I kind of want to steer this towards the health aspect of it. Um, I have issue with legalization of everything because if you do legalize everything, then that ends up becoming a burden on society on the health end. Um, does anyone have anything to say in regards to that? Can you clarify? So you have a whole bunch. Uh, so it, it's heroin, cocaine, meth. Uh, all of these things have great impact on your body, a negative impact on your body. Um, so you smoke cigarettes, you're more likely to get lung cancer. So, uh, as a society, we have to spend more money on helping lung cancer not affect people as much. So you, all the negative aspects from heroin, if heroin's legal, all of a sudden though more people are using it, then it's going to raise the cost of health care for everybody because of that. I disagree. Okay. For what reason? It goes back to what I said before. If heroin's legal, that's... What makes you say that more people are going to use it? Uh, and you already have the... From, from other countries that have done similar things. Well, oh. I, I disagree with that, though, because I've also looked at this as well. So, so we let's, have differing let's, studies. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, let, let's, let's... I mean, I don't... I can't see that as evidence then, because we both have these different claims here mm-hmm. and different evidence. And, you know, we, we can't really present evidence on the podcast right now. Which is okay, so, but, so let's say there's uh, there's two things here. One being... What? Go, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't get to finish my point. Okay, make your point. <laughs> okay, so you already have a bunch of addicts that are costing us money, and they're, and then they have to go to these clinics and get methadone, and you know it's already costing us money, and then they get put in prison, which costs us even more money. I, I'm definitely agreeing with you on the prison aspect. So, well, even if you just decriminalized it, then you'd have a lot less people, at least in prison. No, and I, I def, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with decriminalization. You guys, you and Nathan both made the claim for complete legalization across the board. Right. I mean, that's what I'm arguing against because I think that, yes, we already have a drag on our society from people who are addicted, and that would grow. I don't think it would. So, are you going to do heroin just because it's legal? I might try it. Uh, what I'm saying is that there are there no. there are, there are fringe people who oh maybe I would try that maybe I wouldn't I, I, it might be try, nice to do, at least try it yeah I think those people would would try it and, and I think and they I, would try it even if it's not legal I no because it's one uh, it's illegal which is a great barrier um, in so many different ways one just people's thought processes I don't I care know. if it's legal or not I'm not doing it okay. I mean, a metaphor I might make is that's just uh, me. Is skydiving is legal right now? We can go skydiving, right? But how many people want to go skydiving? A ton. And if it was illegal, how many people would skydive? 
a ton. No. I, because I, I, it would be really hard to find somebody. You have to know somebody who knows somebody who has a plane and a parachute and is willing to take you up and knows a safe place that you can have a drop zone and knows how to do it correctly. There are all these huge barriers. But when it's a legal thing that the government controls and you know what you're getting, I would be much more likely to try something that I wouldn't try otherwise just because I know it's safe and I, and I want to try it out. I want to have that experience. But you have the people that are attracted to the just the fact that it's illegal so if they're gonna do it just because it's illegal you know so, what i mean so it's because it's cool this is actually a thing i've seen certain studies as well where it, it's kind of the cool effect so like, like kids are rebellious especially when things, something is illegal kids want to do it even more so like you put a sign up says don't skateboard here that's where all the kids are going to hang on skateboard so there is kind of a contra- contradictory effect there with certain laws and stuff like that. Right. Okay, I, I I'll concede to that point. I think that that might currently bring the numbers up a slight bit over what it would be otherwise if Look it was at, legal. Isn't 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 in Europe um, where you can drink at any age, and their alcoholism rates are lower. Uh, I don't know. Germany I, is if you can see over the bar, you can drink. That's legit the rule. So most like seven-year-olds, six-year-olds. Those you, poor midgets. Yeah. Right? <laughs> 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 okay. Well, that's what they traditionally went by. Um, most other places, I think it's 18 Britain. and 16. Yeah, Britain is 18, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Then, 16 with parents. Well, in the U.S., you can actually have alcohol at any age with parents. Inside your home. In, oh, inside your home. Yeah, inside yeah. your home. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Legit. <laughs> I'm going to actually, like, T-bone this conversation real quick. Because, Steve, you're talking about the societal cost of having drugs legalized. And t- to me, I'm not going to say that doesn't quite matter. But I'm not really consequential on this. I'm more about the individual rights involved in this. So my position of as far as legalization of drugs go goes like this. You have the right to your own your body. You can make decisions upon – you can make choices of what to do based on your rationale. You have to have a free choice in there so you can't be like drunk or you know like half dead or whatever. And because of this, you can choose to do whatever drug you want. The health consequences are irrelevant provided that you accept those consequences on your own. And, that, and of course, that's not entirely all possible. But I would say if you are a smoker and you're smoking for 20 years and you get lung cancer, that lung cancer is on you because it was your decision that came up to that. So my argument to that would be that while you're saying that it, you know you have a right to your own body, I, I definitely agree with that. And I respect that. And I think that's a great way to think. But the societal cost – matters a ton um you brought up smoking so let's say that you smoke for 40 years and the people around you get secondhand smoke and get lung cancer from secondhand smoke which we can make tons of arguments for and against but let's just say that you're impacting somebody else with your own decisions now a little less tangible is the idea that you're impacting other people economically with your decisions when you're addicted so should that not play a part in the societal choice of whether or not something should be legal well, if it's it, impacting everybody negatively? This whole argument feels very, very complex because – you it, know, well, I, it is. That's why we're talking about it. You could, cause, <laughs> well, because I could you know, echo back with that and saying that economically, why we've made such a big societal problem is because it is legal. So we're having to pay for all the prisons. All, all the, we're having to pay to have these people, all these people imprisoned. All the court fees. We have all these lawyers we're paying to do all this kind of stuff. So let's say it was we're decriminalized paying, but not legal. We're paying cops. If it was decriminalized, then the societal cost would be much, much less. But even then, this will be the cost of the of catching the people who actually provided the drugs. There would be a strong element of crime within that as well. Because the people who do these kind of illegal things are not very good. These mobsters, these kind of drug growers... These are not very good people where if you kind of get rid of that and have, you know, say, legal dispensaries, then these people are much more trustworthy and it reduces crime right there. So the side of the cost, I think, it's very, very heavily with it being decriminalized and especially illegalized. Think of the revenue that drugs would bring in. 
mm. and add to. Well, what I'm saying is that the revenue that they would bring in would be completely nixed by the societal cost in healthcare. It's already huge. So then, why look at all these OD overdoses? Right. Why no, don't I'm not? I'm definitely not saying that we have a good system. But then you wouldn't have pri- all these people in prison. No, I'm sorry. I didn't want to cut anyone off. So (laughs) why don't we cut off their demand and by saying decriminalize it, get the people that are in jail for drug. There's so many weed related. It's not even funny. Get them out. okay? And if someone has a a drug related issue and they're addicted, then why don't we get them and have to pay the upfront cost because there is always going to be a fee. Get them help. And that takes away the demand for the suppliers if they get their help. And they don't relapse. And even if they do relapse a couple of times, it, you know what's going to happen. But then get them back to the help that they need. And if, if there's the help there and it's and it's open and it's like, hey, we want to help you. And it, it's more of an understanding. People are going to be more likely to get the help than to continue with some of the, the harder stuff anyways. And then the cost is lower. Yeah, actually, I think that's how they do it in a lot of places in Europe. Yes. It's it's not, I think it's decriminalized in a way, or it may be criminalized, but you just go to a, like a therapeutic center and get help with that. Right. And I, I think that's a lot more humane. Right. Uh, also, I'm going to just gonna throw this out here to be controversial. <laughs> so I, I think don't tax it at all. Why would you tax like people who are addicted to this this, these drugs they have a mental health problem if someone's you know using heroin and they're addicted to it why would you tax an addict i don't think that's very I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, so in in new hampshire they have um you you buy alcohol within a government-run alcohol store mm. and the government doesn't tax itself so you don't get taxed on that that's tax-free so would the proposed system then be well, – you're all not in favor do, necessarily, but – All they do is make make profit off of you know, buying the supply and then selling it. So the proposed system would be the government supply it, but um, the money being raised that way. So it's just the normal profit a business would make. It's just the government has a monopoly on that kind of business. No, I don't think that we should fully legalize. I think we're all on board with decriminalization but not full legalization. But if you were to legalize it, I would – yes, I would say that would be the best way to go about it. Didn't Colorado do that with marijuana? And um, so now that because they've profited so much, they have to give X amount back to the community in money, um, putting it into their community rather, I should say. I have no data to import there. See, I'm, I'm a little unsure about that. I, I, I've read the one article that said it wasn't that great of a idea but it, it is possible i think that was the idea and maybe, maybe it's actually come to fruition maybe that's what i was reading that it was the idea that it was gonna do that it, this has been the idea for a while okay. so one idea i had and people have kind of looked at me a little strange for this idea but i think it's a great idea let's say we can let's say we don't legalize drugs let's say we just have it like a roller coaster right so you can go to this place and there's qualified doctors there and they'll kind of check you in, and then you sit down, and they'll administer, like, say, morphine or some kind of drug like that. And then you kind of trip while you're there, and they monitor you, make sure you're okay. And then when you're done, you just kind of leave. You know, it's a nice little environment. they got cool little blocks and Legos and, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> got House MD playing in the background. I think that'd be a pretty cool idea. It's, it's, it's just like going to Disneyland, except a hospital. <laughs> what, what would or you... like a bar. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it? <laughs> Oh. Morphine land? <laughs> Drugtopia? I do, I do, I do what I want. That's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what drugs would you guys do if everything was legal? And, you know, it was really pure. You knew what you were getting. Um, it was reasonably priced, et cetera, et cetera. Cocaine. Ju- is that the whole list? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Nathan? I don't really know because I'm, I'm tempted to say like uh, testosterone or like some kind of anabolic thing, but, but probably not. I'm fine with being natural. But uh, I don't know. Like I'm tempted to say E, but this, this one time I smoked weed and I got happy. And it was kind of weird. So I'm probably not E. Yeah, I don't want you to be happy. It, it would just kind of ruin things. Don't go doing that. <laughs> the show would be over. 
So, so I, don't, I don't know. I, LSD, I think, would be too much. Street would be too much. Uh, DMT, uh, that'd be way, 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 way too much. So, so I, I don't think anything, really. Uh, maybe Coke? I don't know. Because Stims are always nice. and that's a... So we got Coke, Coke. What about you, Brie? Oh, man. Um, I, well, I don't really see myself doing Coke at all. Um, um, Coca no. leaves? No. Yeah, right. Coca, <laughs> Coca, Coca, Coca. You can chew them. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, no, I think, I think... I would have to do because I used to like when I when I did have to take medicine, um, Valium. It was prescribed, and it was kind of a downer, and I I kind of like that feeling. So I would have to go with a downer drug on this one. I just don't know. Heroin's really highly addictive. I heard, so I wouldn't pick that. I I really don't know. Valium is also very addictive. Yes, it is. And Valium is such. If I remember right, it's a uh, derivative of hydrocodone and or yes it is Vicodin. yes it is steve how about yourself um i probably try just about everything um probably not downers cause, uh, it's just not my thing but probably just about everything else dmt uh probably dimethyltryptamine or something like that dimethyltryptamine. I, I don't think she is asking for the scientific name. oh okay okay <laughs> so dmt is the drug known as the spirit molecule. It, it's kind of a dumb name, but it's probably the most powerful hallucinogenic out there. Oh. It, it, it's very, very crazy and very, very trippy. I'd probably try it once. I mean, um, what what was salvia? Uh, super, super powerful. Uh, it, it was legal when I did it. And <laughs> it. I, I think it's illegal now, but I'm not sure on that. I'm not 100%. But um, it, like, that was not i i didn't like it that much it was too intense for too short a period of time um i'll, I'll tell a quick story on that um I, I did it and uh i didn't feel anything for like 30 seconds and then all of a sudden i was everything was made of legos and i and that's that's like basically all i remember i thought it was like light outside it was like 10 at night I thought it was like a bright day outside. I was outside and there were, everything was made of Legos and like, like really pieced together and it was really cool and everything was good. And I came out of it and I had been laughing hysterically for like a minute and a half straight. Like it's most laughter I've ever had in my life and I don't even remember it. And I had pissed my pants. <laughs> I had a friend that did salvia and the same thing. He thought he was melting into the chair like he was butter on a hot day. And he was melting into the chair, which was like a stack of pancakes. And he peed himself. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> I remember your uh, your ex, uh, Steve. She did salvia and she told me her experience. I think she actually did it next to me. And she she said she like felt... <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? I don't remember this. <laughs> So your ex, she did Selvia, and she said that she started kind of falling backwards, like a little bit, you know, like she's got to sit back in the chair. And then, you know, she's, that's when it hit her, and she just felt like she was falling backwards for about five minutes. <laughs> that was the best story I've ever heard. <laughs> that was an amazing story, Nathan. It, 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 it sounds pretty awkward, to be honest. I mean, falling backwards for five minutes. Hmm. Time distortion is definitely fascinating. Imagine, like you know, like you like walk up the stairs and you hit that. You think you think at the end, but then nope, not at the end. And you get that kind of weird feeling. Imagine that yeah. for five minutes. That'd be ridiculous. Um, something really important. You know, we're we're wrapping up here. This is the end of the podcast, but um, I think it's really important to kind of drop in a little PSA here. And just say, like, if you're going to – I'm not going to say whether you should or shouldn't do drugs or anything like that. Just do research before you make any decisions because uh, it's not legal right now and you never know what you're getting. Know what you should be looking for. Know what to expect. Do it in a safe place if you're going to, um, preferably with somebody sober that you trust. Um, that's really the safest way, especially if you're doing something for the first time. Just be safe. Be smart. Um, that's, that's what, uh, my mom's always taught me. So, um, if you know, any, anything like that was ever to happen, you've always just taught me in general, 
you know, be smart about decisions that you make. Be be learned and do it in a safe way. Yes. Um, not maybe not necessarily. You said like when you do heroin, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never done heroin, but <laughs> that my point being, you, you were speaking in generalities, but I have, I applied it specifically to this instance. I, I think it's it's an amazing life lesson that you should really take to heart um, if you're going to be be doing drugs. Right, and just to be clear for anybody who may have misunderstood this, I am not for doing drugs necessarily. You know, maybe maybe if you want to like do a little bit of weed or whatever, that's fine. But you know, I'm in favor of legalization, but. Don't don't do heroin. Don't do coke. Or, or maybe maybe do coke. Once how while, dare but... you take? How dare you take this moral stand now, Nathan? After you've talked about all this legalization stuff, and you should have a right over your own body. I... Don't preach that crap. That's gonna make those kids want to do it more. <laughs> not, not saying you you do agree on that one, right? It's like yeah, you... I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, mom? Hey, whose list was the shortest? Ours, well, Breeze was pretty short too, but yours yeah. is the longest. Yeah, and and I'm for legalization. I'm alive. <laughs> so, so actually, Thank goodness. Actually, let's take a second to just go around and say if our opinions have changed, become more and more focused. Uh, B, you want to start? Oh boy. Okay. Um, no, my opinion hasn't really changed. I do think that things need to be decriminalized for sure, and that help should be available to those who need it, but. I don't think it should be legalized. I think the biggest atrocity was the D.A.R.E. program and, um, you know, myths and misinformation provided by our government. Um, I think decriminalization and I think that there should be public education um, and it may be even taught in schools. But I know I was taught in school about drugs and it was a lot of lies. And then when I found out it was lies... I didn't know what to believe, so I had to find out for myself. And that's not a very healthy way to teach our children. I think that we should decriminalize and let education be accurate and free for everybody. I think we should start with decriminalization and work up to legal, legalizing everything. So I still you know, legalize everything. We have a, a great, great train here, of just progressively getting more and more liberal. Uh, great episode. I'm, I hope everybody's still listening. And uh... of course they are. Of course they oh, are. Of course they are. Oh man, how could I ever thought maybe they nodded off on drugs? Well, maybe they were on drugs. <laughs> If, if they were, we need to talk. Was this podcast like a drug for you? Well, give us a rating on iTunes. Also, we're at Twitter at WTT1, and we're at Facebook at We Did the Talk Show. Also, we have a Patreon. You can subscribe to us there for a monthly donation. That'd be just amazing. Tell us what you think, you know, ideas, suggestions, comments, criticisms, whatever. And until next time, peace.